Hey fam, my name's Madi, and if you're anything like me, you like to decorate for the holidays, and Halloween is no exception. This year, I added some really fun bat coasters to my decor, and you know what? These are really handy because you could use them either for your drinks or you can use them as a map for like plant holders or other types of decorations, candlesticks, things like that. And I'm gonna show you how to make these in two different ways. You can either do the traditional leather working way with hand sewing where you punch and stitch, or you can make them on your sewing machine. Either way works fine. So let me show you how to make these. You can grab your free PDF template down in the description box below. Now make sure that you download the PDF pattern and that you don't actually print from the browser because the browser will force it to be a little smaller. If you want it a little smaller, that's fine. It'll still fit a cup, but just keep that in mind. And you're gonna to wanna to print two copies of this. You wanna cut around the bat for the upper layer, and then for the lower layer, <laughs> we're gonna cut those wings right on off. You have one that looks like this with the wings, and you have one that looks like this, that's just the actual body, and they layer on top of each other like that. So those are going to be the two pieces that you're going to need. Don't punch your holes yet. So I've got the bottom piece here, and then you can see this black piece is gonna lay right over, and it's gonna cover a significant part of the head right over here. So I am going to apply the glue to this part and around the edges here. But first I need to sand it and just rough up this head so that way it takes the glue a little better. I don't have to do it on the back side of the black leather because that's already pretty rough. I just wanna make sure that this smooth stuff takes the glue well. So I'm just using the brush that came with the contact cement and I'm applying a good liberal layer on the part that I sanded, making sure that I don't go beyond that. So that way you won't see the contact cement on the inside belly part of the bat. If it accidentally gets there, it's easy to clean up. Now while we wait for that to get tacky, let's apply the glue to the back side of the black part here. So that way we can glue these two pieces together. Oh no, so don't do what I did. I actually extended the glue way out here on the bat wing and you don't want it there. You wanna follow the curve of the circle because that's the only place that it's going to adhere to the brown side. So I'll have to clean that up and rub that right off um, towards the end here. So don't make that mistake. So now grab that black piece and we're going to carefully lay it right over the top of this brown piece, making sure to match those ears and head in particular. And then everything else will fall into place. So just kind of move it around and squish it down. Before the glue totally dries, while it's still tacky, I'm going to rub it to try to remove as much of that glue that is in the visible area here as possible. And then I'll hit it with a microfiber rag to get anything else off. And I'll do that to the back here to remove my little mistake where I applied the glue.
Now grab your template with the wings here and it has all of the um, holes marked on this. We're gonna tape this to this piece um, temporarily. So now I'm gonna share with you a tip that I've picked up that I found super useful and it involves little tea light candles. So go ahead and remove it from the little metal piece and remove that wick and we're going to use this little piece. Let me show you how. Take that little piece of candle wax and rub it around all of these holes. And what it's going to do is allow your punch to easily like go through this paper and the tape and everything and slide right back out. So at this point, we're just going to punch all of our holes according to the template. And so at this point, I am going to saddle stitch all the way around my bat, making sure to catch the ears. And if you need a tutorial on how to do a saddle stitch, you can catch it right above in the Voodoo Doll tutorial. So with this ear, what we're going to do is we're going to take one needle, we're going to pass it in the ear, and then we're going to bring it right back through that bottom hole, right there. Okay, and so you see you have the one stitch on this side and the one stitch on this side. And then you can continue with your saddle stitch. Now back stitch, so that way we can secure these stitches. Clip your ends and then we're going to melt that with a lighter. Okay. The next step is to sand your edges down so that they are completely even and smooth. Um, you don't want one edge to stick up over past the other side. You want to make sure they're pretty level here and you wanna get some of that fuzziness off so that way when we apply the tokenol, it'll make it lay nice and flat. To start, I'm using 180 grit sandpaper and then I'm gonna go all the way down to a 400 grit to make it really smooth. Now I'm going to grab my tokenol and I'm going to apply just a little bit of it over the edges here. A little really does go a long way in burnishing these edges and making them look really smooth and shiny actually. Okay, and so that's what your hand stitched bat is going to look like. Now let's do some machine sewing. So for this bat, I decided I was going to try some fabric tack, which is a fabric glue. So we're going to apply that on our sanded pieces at the head and then also around the edge of the body here, just like we did with the contact cement. Now this stuff takes much longer to get tacky, so you're gonna definitely want to wait for it to get tacky and then attach it to the brown piece like that, just overlaying both pieces so that way they match up at the ears and around the head. Now when you take this bat over to your sewing machine, I started right down here at the bottom and I sewed around and then I came two stitches up the ears and then I backstitched came around up to backstitched and then I just finished those stitches making sure that I backstitched at the end and you can see that that's what it looks like on the back. 
Now, if you're wondering what kind of needle you're going to need to sew this on your domestic sewing machine, let me tell you that I use this one right here. Now, this is a Schmetz um, 120-19 leather needle. Leather needles are nice because they cut through the actual material. If you don't have this, you can try using like a really heavy upholstery needle, but just know that those might actually break a little more easily than a leather needle. So I highly recommend that you use a leather needle in your domestic machine. This is a 19, they come in different weights. Again, I like the 19s with my walking foot on my machine. So this is what the stitches look like. And when you flip it over, this is what it looks like. And you can get a good look at that bobbin thread there. And it's really that simple to make your own really fun leather coasters. Now, I'm going to be giving some of my leather coasters away to my dinner guests who are arriving tomorrow for my Halloween-themed dinner. So they'll each get a coaster, some candy, and a little plant that they can pop right on top of their coaster for their own Halloween decorations. So give it a try and let me know what you think down in the description box below. And until next time, I hope that you have an amazing day. Bye!